All right, so I've made a couple videos already. Uh, one with how the taps are made to create this 370. Uh, one on the rectifier dual stud assembly. So I'm gonna start assembling this one. This is the rear housing. You'll see that I've ground down the edge going around all the way through. Your ground for the alternator itself your hot is coming through here. Your ground is on the other side. So that bolts directly to this case. So the only thing you have connecting your ground to the front on most alternators anyway. There are some that have a mount on the back, but this is a GM style. Those two little mounts right there. So what that goes through is the case and the four bolts that hold it together into this housing or this uh, stator as well on the casing for it. So it's real important that you get those cleaned up real good. You'll notice if I can get this set on here, what would help if I turned it the right way. So you have three square holes. Three sets of leads coming through. They're gonna pop right over top of it. All right, so that's snug down into place. And you'll see that that little offset lines right up with the hole back there. Now, I like to go ahead and get my rectifier set in place. So, get it turned around. Same deal. You got these terminals. You want to line those up on the leads themselves. And sometimes you got to kind of work with them a little bit to get them to feed in. And you have three studs All right. I don't personally when I assemble one I won't do my solder joints these final terminations right here until after everything's assembled because I have gotten a hold of a few of them that somebody has already done that and There'll be a little bit of stress right here, and you, you'll end up seeing where, uh, you know, they didn't have everything quite assembled properly. And when they tightened everything up, this pushes up, ends up breaking a lead here, and you've, you've killed your rectifier out. Or at least part of it, so you're not going to be able to utilize the full potential of the alternator. All right, so these screws will go on the edge. Right. Line this set of bolt holes up here. Handy dandy junk screwdriver here. And if you notice the spots where those screw in, you still see a little bit. The paint's sanded off there and this spot right here. If, if those aren't uh, you're kind of wasting your effort because you won't get a proper ground through your rectifier or your regulator up there. So you won't be able to energize the field. And if it does energize anything, you're going to start burning stuff up in here. I should have pulled the drill out to try and get this video together for y'all. But and I got it sitting right here, but I was using it to buff off the... Uh, edges of the
SRE housing. And then this other side is called a DE housing. It's a drive end housing. Uh, I just, I was using that drill. I had a, those little rasp bits. Sometimes I use a little sander bit and go around the inside there to get that cleaned up good. Uh, this edge right here where the bolts go through, the place that it manufactured it, it only sanded off about where my finger is sitting here. So you only had the edge of this bolt connecting for the ground going through. Uh, I like to give it as many opportunities for that ground connection as I can. All right, so those three screws are in. This one, you don't put it in until you put your, rect or your regulator in on it. So, regulator, we're gonna install it right here. See, everything lines up. You got a shorter screw that goes here. And then that other longer screw will go through. That'll connect this terminal through the ground. trouble getting seated here. Sorry for the poor video quality here. I have to break down and get me something better for doing these videos. It looks like I put the wrong screw in that spot. Gonna use a different size screw so there was one screw missing whenever i got this from the the shop that had taken it apart and apparently it was that screw so i'll i'll go back and get that lined out here shortly so we'll move on to the drive end there's a bearing sitting inside of here it's retaining clip that bearing presses into this housing and then these four screws just like before that one on the back back here they hold that retaining ring in so now that that's in place probably not real professional but i like to use my 70 dollar roll of solder here and uh bearings already on the back side where the slip rings go on this ra this rotor i'll set it back like that it gives me a nice little holder for it So it's in place. This particular setup did not have any shims on it. This pulley, uh, it's going on a Camaro, so pulley's a little bit bigger than what I typically use. It's a, it's already got an offset for the vehicle, so you got your clearance. You're not rubbing.
get that on there. brought one battery out here so I have to share that battery between the uh, impact and the drill now this pretty well I'm gonna have to So, this is setting here, impact on it, hold the rotor. Now, that's on there good and tight. I'll set it on top of the pulley. Now I have that assembly. All right, I had to stop the video. I had a little bit of a issue with this going together so I took some of it back apart and went ahead and found the screw that goes to that got it in so this is all solid the only thing left on this back end is getting these soldered together so once I get it all together that, that'll be the next step so the alternator mounts this way all right so we want these charging stud and the regulator to be to the top. So, it's still a little snug. That's what we're going to do. Got a little bit of Loctite that I'd spilled out there, so I'm just going to use it. Everything's all these four bolts here, I've always put Loctite on. Uh, I use the blue, the medium, just uh, just something to help it hold together. I have seen these back out before on some other alternators. So we're gonna bring it down to just just snug. We want to make sure that all these are even across. And uh, if they're not, the rotor won't spin freely inside. And you'll be able to tell it just by hand that you don't have everything right. Okay. So now, still all the way together. making contact across. Part of the reason why these are snug going in, I don't think I can get it to show it. You've got the bearing that's on the back of that rotor. It's fitting back inside of the cup that's on the, the SRE housing. That's the bearing race for it. So, you know, it has to be a little bit tight as it goes together or it won't properly hold it. together and it's a little out of the line yet.
just a little bit. It's got a little catch right there. It's a little better. I've got this nut again here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop the video, get this adjusted in. Uh, it's just making uh, small moves on it, testing it. And uh, just repeating that process until I get it to where it is spinning. I'm just about there. So, there's no catch. So, now everything's assembled except for the brush holder. So, I went ahead and put the brushes, uh, you just push them up in there with your finger. And it's a real small Allen wrench. It will slide through these two holes, hold your brushes up in place while you slide it over top. Of your uh, slip rings. in there let me get my two screws that go in that and then uh, I'll get the video back up here all right I went ahead and found the screws that go in here I'd uh, I boxed them up with some other stuff as I was moving some stuff around in here so everything's bolted up and after I get the brushes in I always want to set my meter to ohms and those two screws that go in there read across your rotor so I'm reading 1.8 that's a 1.8 ohm rotor so everything's correct uh, if you don't have a good connection here, your field won't energize properly and you won't be putting the right amount out in your alternator. So it's very critical that that's set up right. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this meter, get it out of the way. And 
one of the other things I had done while I was not recording, the SRE cover. I went and took one that was made for the side mount over here, took a grinder and cut the opening out to fit across that regulator. All right, and then this charging stud that we added in another video for it to be a dual charging stud I had to drill a hole out with one of these unit bits that just gives us clearance so that we can get everything bolted up still cover this safely and have access to both charging studs so last thing I got these pliers I'm gonna squeeze that piece around the terminal there. And I'm gonna do this to all What you want is you want that lead to seat back in the back edge right here so it's getting the most contact it possibly can difficulty with this last one here. Okay. So now those are all squeezed together. My next step for my process. Solder paste. I'm going to try and get the heat to transfer as quick as I can. Uh, if I got my brush laying here for it. My workshop is an absolute mess right now. You don't have to have a whole lot of it, just enough to help it transfer that heat. Uh, I want to try and get this uh, soldered. You know, all the heat transferred and the solder applied properly before it gets too hot on all the components because you can damage your your diodes or the windings if you get the insulation too hot you'd have to get it pretty hot to do that but we don't want to risk it just for good measure i'm going to put a little bit on this I just got some regular rosin core solder for this terminal up top.
so I don't use that rosin solder. Flux core solder there. I don't use it for the rest of it, but I got a good connection there. So I'm gonna clean my tip up. Take a little bit of that. Okay, now for these, I don't know if I can get this to where I can give you a good shot of it with the camera or not. Let's see if I can do it this way. Right. So, this is the Kester brand. Uh, it was somewhere between $50 and $70. I can't remember now. Uh, one of the other videos, I said it was a $70 roll when I bought it, but it's, it's been a while. I, I don't remember for sure. But I purchased it from eBay. Uh, this... Solder is a little harder to I'm gonna have to kill the video. I'll start it back after I get them soldered in. That way you can see what the end result is. All right, the, uh, the solder joints together. It takes a little bit for that silver solder to melt in. Got it together. I'm gonna go ahead and set this SRE cover in. And the only thing that's left will be three of those back on.